You don't go. Ma you don't. All right, Leo. So we're you're going season one. I'm going season three, and this is all just because of the flavor that the season three champs are yes. the table here. I like the freshness of the composition here, but as oh, I say, sure. that's the first one. to Death Cutie forever. Nice. You like the freshness, don't you? <laughs> I like it real well. Man. This is going to be an aggressive invade here by the Season 1 champions as Kilowash comes in with the Cables meeting up with the rest of Season 1 as they try to invade. It looks like it is going to be for naught unless... Hold up! Hold up! Oh, oh, the Doctor! Rebo stole the buff! Rebo stole the orange! Kilowash is hungry, Nomad. Kilowash is hungry. He has his purple, but he misses out on the orange. You know, it doesn't matter though, because at any given point in time, Kilowash can just steal their buffs without them knowing. Because uh, Fanny on uh, on her own is a hero that cannot be caught up with. Even if you're, well, say for Ling, nobody can match the speed of which Fanny can traverse across the map. So if Fanny, if Kilowash is going to be very effective here on this, uh, on this Fanny, we could expect a lot of buff steals here on the side of the season three champions okay i guess we'll wait for further rotations right this first one is not the last one uh could be a significant one but nonetheless pain here gonna go ahead and dance and make sure jeff cutie forever hey. at least expends a flicker but ladies and gentlemen yelly hayes here to finish the job he says you're welcome this is gonna be four members pushing in and taking this turret about two minutes in this is gonna be first blood zaman force dropped in by rebo just to make sure it was unnecessary Man, um, this is the inherent problem that the Season 3 champions have. They're, they don't have a uh, very good team fight composition here. They're going to be relying on snipes, just like uh, what happened to Coco there in the bot lane. They're going to be relying on sniping out individual members. But then I'm like, wait, they're, they're playing against each other. You're right. Oh my. Him and Rebo. Coco, Rebo, and Lasty. What? I mean, it's either that or. I mean, I've, I've been to uh, Brent's uh, HQ. I know they have. Uh, we have separate rooms. Uh, yeah, but who would Lasty be looking at? Who else would he be in the same room at, right? That's Talking true. to. <laughs> and as we say that, Lusty is almost eliminated there. No rage connection there. Kilowash gonna be coming in to steal cables. And there goes a Falling Star Moon onto Jay. Getting a double for himself onto Lusty. And he'll manage to survive this if he's gonna be overstaying his uh, welcome there. Kilowash gets taken out as well. Paint's gonna survive this. I believe he is. Oh no, that Cyclone Eye just missed the wall by an inch. He could not go through it, but Jeff could not commit the bite. And this is going to be a free turtle for the Season 1 champions. They are ahead 6 kills in Nomad, about 3,000 gold in under 4 minutes. This is a fight that Lusty could not pick. And of course, Rio here, Miracle, he's not dead yet. So that's an insurance policy for uh, Season 3 champions. They could hold on to this Claude. Yeah, the, the, the Rio is their uh, linchpin here uh, for, for the Season 1 champions in order for them to lose the game, so to speak. If Rio goes online in the 7th minute mark, get the Demon Hunter Sword, and then... Uh, is it either a Demon Hunter Sword or an Endless Battle, and then follow it up with a Golden Staff? Uh, Rio can already start shredding the HPs here of the Season 1 champions. And that is what the Season 3 champions would want to do. Try to keep him up as long as possible. But as I say that... He is going to be uh, relatively harassed there. Orange buff is going to be uh, secured there as well for him. So he's uh, he's got that going for him. Jeff Kitty forever, though. Oh, wow. Falling Star Moon making sure to get the job done. Pain, where did he take that orange buff from? I think that was a steal because Coco has one, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Rio Rebo the with the Zaman Force. Who was he threatening? Obviously did not get a kill. I believe it was Rio he was engaged with. And now, what is this? Death Bush from Season 3. Yelly Hayes is going to enter that. Ooh, Rio stealing a little stack from uh, Yelly Hayes here. There you go. There's a blast from Jay. Nice commitment on the rage, though. Yeah, Luo Ye is such an interesting hero. Uh, again, not making a showing in most pro scenes. So uh, you'd have to forgive us for not knowing exactly what she does. But we have an idea, and I think we see what they're trying to do here. Season 3 champions, they want to make use of that unique kit. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Luo Ye got nerfed uh for for the most part when she got out 
Her second skill was supposed to deal um, more damage in an area of effect area, but it seems to be a lot less now compared to how she was prior to their release. Yeah, I don't know if, if, if that's what they needed to do because her ult is so finesse. There's so much you need to do to make that work. But look at this now. Fight breaking out in the purple pit of season three and down goes Kilowash. That Fanny could not get a break. Jeff Cutie forever going to go down. The bushes are not enough to protect the Hilda. And that is going to be a top lane push. Not even looking here for a season one. And looks like Rio going to use the Blazing Duet to protect himself. But Coco and Yuji have a different idea. Coco popping the Cotterant Inferno here. He's chasing down Rio. Rio does have the orange buff, but just does not have enough firepower just yet to stop a Raging Thumbs. This uh, Raging Thumbs is... Um... Oh. And I secured that kill, so to speak. Bot lane, uh, there goes a teleport onto Pain. Pain is in a bit of a pickle here, does not have the Falling Star to escape, and it's good to say that he is gonna go down, but that is just a. It's not even a silver lining for the season champions. They are way behind. Nine uh -huh. kills ahead. Uh, 6,000 gold lead by the season one champions. It's, uh, this is gonna be a hard hill to climb, a hard mountain. The climb. Uh huh. As, as a silver lining, it is not, but it's something. They'll take it. It's some gold, you know. Bro, bro, a shutdown. Uh, a shutdown on pain, nonetheless. He was sitting at six zero one. So that's a hefty amount of coin for whoever actually got the kill. So yeah, it's a bronze lining. It's it's a, a you know a hefty amount of coin. Right? Still, kind of, you can say that. But can, on yeah. the map here. It's, it's obviously very blue, especially up top. Wow, how they pushed in that second tier turret as well. Now, what could be the next move here? Obviously, the second and last turtle of the game here uh, going to be worked on by Rebo, who does have uh, the retribution. He has been using Zaman Force to push a lot. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. And I think they need that given how much more mobile the Season 3 lineup is. Yeah. And all things considered, Rio got his uh, Demon Hunter Sword at the uh, 7 minute mark. Kind of late for about 20 seconds, but it's still uh, earlier. Just considering the fact that he did die once. And he got most of his buffs stolen. So that's uh, somewhat good progress for the insurance policy here for the Season 3 champions. That's an interesting statement because who needs the buff more really here? Kilowash or Rio? And if they're sharing, it's not a good look. Especially against a lineup that's so aggressive with season one mm, and speaking of aggression here jeff cutie forever has been aggressively been shut down zero five and one really uh, not a characteristic pick here it could have been uh, jeff cutie forever on the rio to be honest uh, on the uh, on the claude i mean yes 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 he is one of those uh captains who plays a marksman now lusty in trouble coco gets the kill Turtle picks up uh soon. queen's wings after the fact and they are gonna go move along with this little wonder well, wow, Kilowash sneakily takes the purple. You see that? Did he get it, though? He was in the pit. Did he get it, though? Where is Kilowash? Or is he Kilowash? just chilling there? Pain spots him out. Uh, no. I think he's just waiting. Yeah, he's going to spawn. Yeah, he's going to try to steal us. He could steal us. He has retribution. Oh. And Pain doesn't know that he's there. Gets oh, the steal. He gets it. And we'll just steal Cable the hell out of there. Oh. He'll, bump into, uh, he'll bump into Coco though, but I don't think that's going to be a major problem. Jeff Kitty Forever is going to be there to uh, uh, keep him alive, keep him up and running, and he's going to be offering his life for this. Falling Star Moon not going to be connecting onto Jeff Kitty Forever, but he still falls down. I like how Pain is like, get back here, that's my buff. But nonetheless, another fight breaks out. Pain pays the price. Kilowash coming back to finish the job that he started. And this is going to be oh! a bigger fight than they expected. Yeah, he looks like he's low. Rio gets a kill. And this might be the turning point. Yuji, that is going to be a Valir. You can't fight this fight, man. But unless you have backup from behind, from Season 3's base comes Coco and Rebo. Again, the Zaman Force plus Coco with that orange buff. Make sure that that trade was a little more uh, beneficial to S1 champs than it originally seemed like. But now look, Kilowash, does he have items now? Because he's dealing quite a bit of damage. Um, I believe so. Some, some. That, that steal especially, I really like what he did there. Very uh, bold of him to steal that in front of Pain. Oh, there you go. There's a golden staff by Rio as well. The shredding will commence here. Man, How are you feeling so far about uh, Yu Oli? Uh, Luo Yi, I, I got the letters <laughs> mixed up. Uh, Luo Yi is fine, not com not competitively viable, but uh, Luo Yi is fun to play. 
Especially cares? if you're trolling your teammates where, you know, hey, let's go ahead and go way behind them and then you all die because um, you're, a, you're a big target. Oh. So Speaking of being wow. a big target, Jeff Kitty Forever is a big target. Being taken down by Ribo and Rio finally uh, making the dividends pay as what would Wolf say. Uh, getting two kills in succession. Here we go. The investment in Rio slowly uh, paying off. But oh, just as I noted, Rio just goes down. Rebo gets a kill. Zaman Force committed here. Man, the cooldown on that thing just seems to be really low. I actually miss Harit, man. It's been a while since we've seen Harit, uh, especially in uh, the MPL main seasons. But here in the Invitational, given the all-around band pick, we're more likely to see the white-haired menace. Now, Rebo sitting at a 407, Pain at 8, 2, and 4. And Yuji just refusing to die at 14 assists. He is a support extraordinaire. Now, Kilowash finding some time to farm up, give a little space to his team. Gonna threaten this push on this top lane turret. Man, that could have been their first push. But now, look at this. Jeff Gear Forever caught out by Yuji and Rebo. That's two types of flames coming at you, my friend. Well... That's Koko. I was expecting Koko to be there. But this is just one type of flame from Yuji and Rebo chasing you. Zaman Force already committed here. And as you can see, that is Jeff running through the bushes oh, nice. to help He's out kill the Koko getting pinned down. But it looks like it's Lusty who's going to be regretting that because Koko pops the Inferno. Now Jeff going down. Finally, after a long drawn out chase, he's going to be the only casualty here. That's going to be a false engage by Season 3. Mm, they're not really using their strengths to their advantage here in Season 3 Champions. They should recognize that they cannot fight at all in a 5v5 because they, uh, Season 1 Champions has better engages. Uh, Akai is built to be a counter-engage uh, hero, so to speak. Yeah, there mm -hmm. are rare moments when you can actually use Akai as an engagement, but that's mostly uh, you being reactive to what the Season 1, what your opponents would be doing. You uh, see a blender to a thousand pounder to connect with the uh, hurricane dance um back then you would see a petrified being uh uh done on akai but now sprint is a more viable option for that so that you can reposition yourself but how can you really reposition yourself as an akai when you're going up against such a maneuverable uh, composition here from the season one champions once you go for zone force if you're a rebo you can freely chrono dash away from akai and yelly hayes is going to be there to stop the hurricane dance from coming just one bouncing ball or even one uh one revenge oh. is oh. more than enough to pass oh. them back and Look coco here is going to be uh in the back lines luo yi uh, attempting to go for a uh, fake tp and there goes the uh, hurricane dance very good engagement there uh, coming from back lines but the hps are not going to be present the damage output is not going to be enough for the season three champions, we m is this is going to be game one for the season one champions, no doubt. But Kilowash making dreams work here, taking down yeah, uh, taking down the uh, Yelly Hayes there for a bit, and this is gonna be it. The minions are also available. Season one champions are gonna take this. Yep, there you go. All they need is right. you don't go, my, you don't. And wow, season one. The return of Mage Dad. You no, it's not Mage Dad Yuji. Oh, it's a okay. P, it's a PNK Yuji. So we're, we're closer to the evolved form. We're closer to, to current times, right? Yeah, we're not seeing a Mage Dad just yet. We're uh, seeing Rebo though, uh, on a uh, Lunox. Pain is uh, relegated to the X Borg mm -hmm. uh, pick here. And um, I have yet to see how effective Jay is going to be here on that Natalia. Jay is um, in recent the uh, in recent tournaments. Jay has been pretty good yeah. on the Natalia. We'll see if uh, that will translate into this uh, game. Early aggression coming in from season three here as they uh, bully Pain out of his lane down bottom. Uh, that is going to be uh, wow off camera kill on to Coco. And is this uh, a secure? by a season three okay so a couple of things have happened already as we entered the game pain got bullied down bottom he already used his flicker he had to go home uh the old-fashioned way and yelly hazier getting caught out by three members can they finish the job oh wow down he goes first blood by rio and just like that i think season three is back in it they're up about a thousand gold 
might might just be you know a remake of season three finals you know Bren winning game number one archangel winning two games in a row might be the case but coco is gonna be quickly taking gonna be taken care of there by this three-man gang squad and this is actually a pretty uh potent gang squad as well lancelot will just We'll dive into the back line. So Talia's gonna be assisting with uh, spotting out anybody that can be a potential target. And Natalia on her own will also Shut dish out uh, a lot of damage because of the passive. Every time that she comes from hiding, uh, stabs them in the back, Natalia dishes out a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. And just like that, they shut down Rio with a three uh, and one record. That that's just pretty good. Quite a bit of coin, especially under two minutes. Now I think we will slowly uh, come back to uh, Equilibrium here, down at par, but wow, pain here, cannot breathe, this is gonna be another kill, Jay gets it, oh man, wherever Jay is, he can just say, we can do this, we can kill him, and they eventually do, now, they have to choose, season 1 champions that is, they have to choose where they place their heroes and how they rotate, because if not, this is gonna continue over and over again, big fight in mid, Rio getting bursted down, that's a kill by Yelly Hayes, and that is going to be that. But up top is seemingly the cause that Jay wants to force. Let's just bully Pain, man. Yeah. Wash help me out. Yeah. Pain is um not is feeling all the pain in the world here in the top lane. Oh. Kilowatt manages to destroy the turret, and they're gonna go for that beautiful with the dragon onto onto Pain with the Jay with with Jay with a follow up as well. That was a uh, that was worth it. If I do say so myself, they Definitely. got the turret. Last minute, Kilowash went for the wave the dragon, but he does pay the price for that. So it is a. I was supposed to say it was almost Ooh. going to be a flawless uh, escape there for Jay, but he pays the price for it. That's still a turret down, though. Oh, and a steal. They stole the buff. They stole the buff now. Check it out. Can they contest this turtle? Or will Rio have his way? Oh, I think they are. Kilowash is enough of a distraction. Way of the Dragon onto Pain, and is this Lusty going down? Oh, nice push back here by Lusty. Man, Valir's kit really just does wonders against high loss. But this uh, Popo and Koopa kit will just, you know, chase him down. Uh, chase down uh, Valir for for that matter. So as long as the uh, knockback is uh, on cooldown. But oh, season one champion so you're gunning out for this uh, mid lane glorious pathway by Yelly Hayes just to initiate the retreat. Rio diving in onto Rebo. Rebo forced to use the Order Brilliance. We'll, ma we'll make it out there. Yuji though, sitting inside lines waiting for an opportunity to strike. But Season 3 champions, they said, nope. We're not going to be uh, overseeing our welcome here in the mid lane. The focus on the top lane so that they can get uh, turtle priority. Impressive uh, split. Uh, well, basically forcing up top and bottom here. Uh, season 3 is doing onto Season 1 so that they don't know where to go. This lineup on Season 1, uh, it's not as mobile. It's it's not very fast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Yelly Hayes has to move, uh, to be fair, to, to rotate. Um, Coco has a global ult, but really, if he's not there to capitalize, it doesn't do much. It only stops what Season 3 is doing. So this is good on Season 3 by putting so much early pressure on top and bottom, just distracting Season 1. And now look at this. He might have bit more than he can chew off and that's Jeff Curie being off by the season one champions this is our base this is our side of the map you should not have forced it Jeff and now they can secure their own purple as they defend this mid man I thought Jeff Curie forever was going for a um, a trade there for himself for the top lane turret because that was a big uh that was a, a big present from the season three champions on the top side but Turtle unfortunately it wasn't the case uh, Kilowatch wasn't able to uh, push in uh towards the eternal uh, not the turtle, the uh, top lane uh, tier 2 turret. Mm -hmm. uh, they do get a semblance of priority here over the turtle, but the season 1 champions are just lying and wait for the opportunity to strike. And I don't think uh, season 3 champions will just contest this just yet. Meanwhile, over in mid lane, Round two. they do get Jeff Kitty forever once again. He's not tanky yet. Jay's going to be in the back lines, though, looking for an, ass assass for an assassinate. Season 3 champions, though, are playing together. Here comes the Dark Knight Falls. Coco's gonna be joining in the fray. Uh, spots out Jay. Jay's gonna be uh, bouncing out of there. Not gonna be uh, dealing any much of that. And there, there we have it. That's space created for a kilowatt to start pushing in over the top lane. 
Mid lane already down, to, uh, the top lane turn already down to half HP, and they're just doing what they can here. Yep, that was a mirror by Kilowash onto Coco, and uh, it helped that Coco moved into mid, but this did not. Coco going down, a kill here by Jay and Jeff. Sure, the Season 1 champs get some priority onto Turtle, but they're still behind here. Nice pushback here by Lusty. Lusty's doing such a great job on that Valir, I gotta say. Especially how he counters um, Yelly Hayes. Oh, there you go, secured by Yuji. That was close. Yeah, that was a, that was a throwback to how the season two was played. Uh, you typically see Lancelot being able to steal all of the uh, the, the neutral objectives there yeah, with yeah. the Thorn Roads. Or Lusty stealing turtles or lords. That's a thing. That's a thing too. Yeah. And he's done it with other heroes, like weirder choices, like Grok and Akai, and Minotaur. I think at one point, ridiculous. I mean, Minotaur can uh, still uh, go for the kills. And speaking of oh, going oh. for the kills, there was a way. Where there was a way of the dragon there onto pain. I don't think that was worth it. A turn's gonna go down, but he's gonna be paying the price for that. Nice knockback by Lusty, allowing Kilowatch to survive that. Oh, oh, but he might be the one who goes down. Flicker in by both Yelly Hayes and Lusty. Kilowatch still staying here, and he wants to finish the job, but Lusty's gonna go down. Kilowatch can only no, watch. Turning. They're turning, him. they're gonna be turning on this because oh. the rest of the season three captain are gonna be collapsing here over the top lane. They're gonna go for Yuji. Nice Jeet Kundo there to knock up Yuji as well. Here comes the uh, retaliation squad by the season one champions. Coco and uh, Rebo there were lying in wait, waiting for an opportunity for them to strike back. But season three champions read that, read that and they're backing off. Yeah. And Good even commitment. though I think it wouldn't be enough, Rebo and Coco, uh, sorry, Rebo and Coco wouldn't be enough. But look at this, Jay. He's gonna run away. He can't. Neither of them could fight this. It's not a smart win uh, or a sure win for either side. Yeah, and speaking in, uh, with Coco having the Blade of Despair too, he's gonna slowly starting to hurt the sad sword, as you like to call it, will uh, yep. <laughs> make them sadder. Ooh. So to speak, that was huge deletion. He oh, managed to survive one HP in a dream, and this is going to be the season one champions trying to trying their best to convert this nice wave to dragon. On to Rebo. Rebo might just fall down. Nice stun on to Kilowash by Popol and Koopa, but that is still going to be Rio. Uh, that's going Rebo going down. Nice thorn rose there by Rio. It is a one for two trade as Yelly Hayes takes him out. And it's not done, man. They're scaring Kilowash away and pain with that last insanity coming in at the nick of time to make sure that they don't force it. And look at this Jeff Cutie forever saying, Hey, am I late to the party? It looks like I am real here. Oh, caught out by Yelly Hayes, and he's gonna go down. Blunder. A blunder. That's a very, very big blunder, sir. It should have, have happened if, uh, I mean, if Rio was paying attention, he, he should have just walked towards the top side and recall there. Yeah. But nonetheless, uh, this is what makes games uh, interesting and a little more competitive. Seeing as to uh, how we are 9 9 in 10 minutes, right? And look at this down bottom being threatened once more by season one. Here we go, Dark Knight Falls. Where's the fight gonna be picked? Interesting timing though for the Dark Knight Falls, don't you think? I think the, um, they kind of overestimated their positioning there. The Dark Knight Falls could have. Did the screen just go dim? Because Coco seems to be still having his ult at this point. It's, I think the screen just went dim, you're right. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I thought that was a Dark Knight Falls too. That was just a dimness of this. Was it, right? Did it happen to you too? Yeah, it just looks like the Dark Knight Falls is happening until now. But we'll, we'll see. We'll, it we'll might we'll fix see. it up yeah, later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Because I thought it was a complete, you know, you know, my monitor just went dark. Oh, oh Jeff. Man, I guess he was buying time because look, up top, that's a big wave catching up. And Jay going to TP out of there. He might be a little too behind the enemy lines at this point. And behind enemy lines, Jay will try to still look for another assassination attempt here. They're focusing a lot of attention to uh, the mid lane, though. Season 1 champions uh, will be able to secure this, which is the time now for Kilowash to trade it out oh! for Liberty Turret. But that's not going to happen quickly. In quick succession, two people will fall down by the hands of the Season 1 champions. 
could have been a call for Killer Watch to uh, split push, to be honest, to force a season one champions to back off. Yeah, that was such an interesting situation uh, where it seemed like season three champions were waiting in a death bush. That turned directly into saving Private Rio, and Rio just got shut down hard. His Lancelot has been performing well, but now it's looking quite messy. Careless he's been in the in the recent uh, team fights. Five four one now. Yeah, he's um, he's sort of falling off now at the uh, 12 minute mark that we have here. Lord is going to be secured by season one champions, no doubt. Unless, no, that's not going to happen. Jay's not going to. Jay won't, Jay won't be able to steal this. And it's uh, all thanks to Rebo securing that kill. There goes the Dark Knight Falls. And Jay is the primary target here. He has been the edge of the back of their. Uh, you know, at the back of their backs that they can't reach. Mm -hmm. The backest of backs, the itches of itches. And Jay is, is looking good. 4 2 3, high and dry. That's exactly what you should be doing. And the execute. Well, really, the only target for execute, I, I believe, would be Rebo or Coco. Because it's so hard to catch Yuji. It's so hard to catch Yuji, especially with that extra body. Pupa. Um, I would beg to differ because Coco wouldn't be a good. A target for us an execute, especially if you're Jay, because Coco, if he stacks up his stingers, he will one shot this Natalia. Yeah, but what if Coco is already low, right? He's still a softy, despite being an assassin. He's still a softy. That's true. That is um, that is also a factor. If that would happen, and Coco is just did he use a dark knight false again? No, no, no. My, my screen's looking clear now. It's all good. But yeah, he. I think it's off a of cooldown. He did use it in the false engage earlier. Now he's going to be pushing this turret up top. And the map is looking a little more even, Nomad. I think Season 1, they're back on the horse. They're galloping towards the siege. Starting with the second tier turret. And if they choose to, unless Jess has something to say about it, he is cutting lanes. How rude. And how appropriate. That's exactly what you do here to stop this push. But there's nothing they can do. This turret's going to go down. Gonna go down is uh, what's gonna happen, as well as the HPs here from the season three champions. We're gonna, just gonna be playing it safe here. Kilowatch and Jeff Kitty Forever may just be over. They have been using oh. in uh, season uh, during their their opener in, Back in it. yesterday. Back in it, yeah. There is there goes the aggression that we that was a, that was a, that I was just saying. Uh, finally secured a kill onto Hayes. Here goes the last insanity, but it's not going to be uh, amounting to much. They're fighting back here. Yuji and Pain left alone here. And they are going to fall down. No doubt. This turret might actually go down. Nice. Jeet Kune Do there by Kilowash. Oh. To prevent any more damage being sent out. And that is a wipe out as well. This mid lane turret is going to go down. Can actually convert it into another turret. As it's only going to be Coco left alive. Great juggle on the uh, turret aggression here by the Season 3 champions. And yeah, I think the Season 1 champions, they may have overstayed their welcome, but look at the wave inside their base, Nomad. Someone's got to go home. Someone's got to clear that up. And the Season 1 champions, they get their tank and their assassin just in time to defend. And it looks like Season 3, they're going to play it safe and they're going to get the hell out of dodge. Man, if this was a... Um... You know, if only one of the Season 1 champions had a, an arrival, Season 3 champions would be panicking right now at this point. Oh yeah, they could have forced that. But now look at this Coco picking off Jay, and that's going to be Strike 1. I'm giving the Season 3 champions here a couple more mistakes to make, and if they do not cover up or shore up those weaknesses, man, the Season 1 champs could just clutch this game too. And be on match point as well, that's going to be a comfortable yes. uh, lead for them. I mean, I was I was also so hyped to see like you know storyline repeating itself with the season three champions uh, getting game them two and three. Unfortunately, it's not the case. Uh, season one champions are showing that they have improved since then. Uh, not to say that the season three champions did not improve individually. They are still uh they're still performing really well, all things considered. But this is just a season one champion being uh being better in terms of the aggression. As I say that. The aggression is actually being turned on the favor of the Season 3 champions, forcing out the Order of Brilliance on Toribo. Oh. Pain also fell down after... Uh, Pain also falls down after uh, an overextension there over at the bottom lane with the last insanity. And now look at this Yelly Hayes trap between the four members of the Season 3 squad. And he is going to be able to flicker out, but it might be too late. 
no immortality whatsoever to help him uh, stay on the map. At least Yuji and Koko are here. So that's going to be enough for them to defend, uh, sort of, or at least keep the pressure on. And it's not going to be as free a lord for Season 3 as it would have if, again, a wipeout happened. So, again, Jay here dying. This might have been the sacrifice they needed to stay in it. And I'd rather have that than another wipeout for either team. So far, so good. Uh, still, uh, neither person's game, uh, neither team's game. But look at this, no bad. Three members taken on Lord, but Pain here not gonna let this take happen so easily. Oh wait, Kilowash caught out. There's a stun. He's oh. Just fighting back. oh, he's blown up. He could have, he could have escaped there with a wave of the dragon, but he just got bitten by uh, Koopa. And it is now looking not good, not looking good for the season three champions. They are now on the back foot here. Shouldn't have went for the Lord take to be honest. It could have just zoned season one champions yeah. away from that first. Yeah, the, the, the decision to take that fight or to force it there was, I don't know, might have been the last one they can afford. Jeff Yuri goes down here. That's going to be three members missing from the season three squad. Jay waiting the wings. History has its eyes on you, my oh, friend. You do not so want bad. to pick this fight. It's not something you can win. He's going in from the back. Can he do this? The passive, can he pop it? Nope. Rebo once more, just like earlier from the first Lord in this game, uses that to secure the Lord. And that's going to be another kill for the season one champ. Second Lord going to be marching through top. They're just waiting for it. And now the siege on the mid begins again. Oh, look, Jay caught out again. Yuji's barely alive, though. Yuji needs to get out of there. Yeah, he's one HP in a dream. And that's gonna be Jay assassinating him, no doubt. Koopa stops that from happening, though. That's quickly going to uh, sound the rotation there from the season three, from the season one champions. I mean, and Coco is gonna be paying the price for that. And uh, I mean, oh, Jay actually survived. Jay survived. Yep, yep, yep. But again, it's it's thanks to that invisibility. There's really no reliable way to pop the invisibility uh, off of Natalia just yet. But look at this now, Coco bursted down by Jeff from behind. And I think Jeff can still fight this. Oh, Rebo taken out by Jay. Cleanup crew in aisle mid. There you go, last insanity by Pain. Raining down the flame. UG alongside the Koopa chasing down the squad from season three. There's only Rio and Lusty left to defend. Lord here just providing some base smashing services. And it looks like it's getting. You don't go, man. You don't. By Leo and um, a little too late for the prediction, but I'm liking the season one composition better than the season three uh, composition. What do you think Same. about this? Uh, how poetic would it be, right? In season three playoffs, grand finals, uh, Archangel clutched a win uh, uh, for the title with a Gushin. Now the season one champs here. They are about to make history and just turn that back around. They have a gushion of their own. And it's on pain. Nonetheless, it's on pain. So this is going to be interesting. Look at this now. Rebo looking low. Whoa. They, they failed to protect their own purple. But it's first blood drawn here by Yelly Hayes. Taking out Kilowash on his signature thumbs. Possibly one of the greatest thumbs in all of Season 5. Mm-hmm. And... Hey, man, um, just pointing this out, though, it's still going to be a Gushin side lane a and a Uranian side lane, which we've seen uh, slowly being implemented by some of the international teams out there. Uh -huh. And with the Season 1 champions adapting this to their play style, it's looking like it's going to be worthwhile for them because typically we see the uh, Gushin being picked up on the side lane on when they pick up the Kimmy. I'm not sure about the Natalia being picked up. It is a good pickup against a potential assassinate on the Kimmy, but this just applies a lot of pressure for the Season 3 champions. They cannot uh, really let their guards down here in this fight because they're going to be dish they're gonna be dealing with Yelly Hayes dishing out a single target damage, but who's going to be the primary target? It's going to be Lusty, and UG is going to be scaling really well. Pain on that uh, Gushin will also scale really well in terms of dishing out a lot of damage with the full combo as soon as he uh, gets level 4. So really, the Season 3 champions are going to be forced to go into a full-on fight. Speaking of a full-on fight, the HPs are really relatively low here. 
for the season one champs, and they're gonna be forced to back off. Oh, look at Coco. He's forcing Jeff Beauty Forever into a brawl, but it's not a good kind of fight for him to pick because he does have a turret in his face. And as we say that, no man, check it out. Kilowash once more dunked into the earth by Yelly Hayes, and Jay could not save his teammate. And uh, who is this on the Popol and Koopa? Lusty. All right, Lusty here, he's rotating from top to mid, mid to top. Uh, this is a support, uh, Popol and Koopa once more, and he's trying to pull a Yuji. Man, Yuji just showed us how to play Popol and Koopa in game two. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to see if Lutzi would be able to be like Yuji uh, going into the mid game, having uh, Koopa being the six man that matters here for the season three champs. And that's the Falling Ooh. Star Moon committed there. Oh! Hey, 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 here's another kill onto Lutzi. Falling Star Moon was committed there over at the uh, the Pixel Brush, but this, it didn't actually convert into anything. Rebo will be able to escape that. It's Early gold. four, no. It's gold for Yelly Hayes. Very gold for uh, Yelly Hayes. Um, three, zero, and one. A hundred percent kill participation for him. He's been murdering everybody left and right here. Murderized. Murderized. Yeah. I actually appreciate now how uh, this Natalia is hyperactive, but we did mention earlier that it could just possibly be protection for Yuji's Kimi, but it's actually the other way around. He's protecting Kimi, protecting Yuji, by making sure that no one can approach him. By, by protect... It is, his, uh, his circle of protection is just so huge at this point. And there you go, at least a uh, silver lining here to this uh, rough early game for the Season 3 champions. They're able to secure the turtle. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see if there's going to be any good wax-ons and wax-offs here by Rio well, with the Falling Star Moon just relatively in time with their uh, execution. That's what I'm looking forward to see here. Yeah. Uh, as it is, though, uh, again, this is Yelly Hayes just waiting uh, for his next execution, waiting for his next kill, waiting for someone uh, to allow him to sweep the leg. But right now, look at this, Rivo, walking into uh, Rio and Jay. Lusty following through, but look at this, Kilowash pops the Cotter and Inferno, but he senses that Yelly Hayes is around, and Yelly Hayes just dodging people's vision, making sure that the exclamation point don't pop. Oh! Rio with the Falling Star Moon onto a recalling pain. Mm -hmm. And there is a retaliation kill almost immediately, almost instantly, by Yelly Hayes on the Kilowash. Man, that was Yelly Hayes unchained there. Uh, that was very ballsy to dive straight into the Tier 2 turret. But Yelly Hayes managed to do it. He's currently unkillable. He's unstoppable here. He's sort of like a blade runner here for the team. Oh, one might say he is bulletproof. But as it is, Lusty looking low here. Coco applying enough pressure. I did notice that mid was already uh, taken down. Where's the first turret by Season 3, though? All right, it's down bottom. Down All right, bottom, that's yeah. uh, a good take there. And Pain here, we have yet to see his Gushin pay off. Um, again, it is a sidling Gushin. It is an execution. Pardon my... Uh, my uh, preference for puns, but uh, this is going to be a good push here. Safe. No need for kills here to convert into a oh. third take. But oh, wait! There goes the last insanity. A couple of bodies already uh, falling down here, but Pain managed to survive there. Uh, you're taking Jay with me if I'm going to go down. It is a one for three trade. Season three champions are slowly uh, climbing back into this. And it might just convert into another one as Coco is going to be the one. Spotted out here. Rebo gonna try to be the wall for uh, uh, the, the savior here for the season three champ. Uh, for uh, Coco, I mean. And Coco getting out of here like it's rush hour. Down bottom, Kilowatch though, split pushing, popping the Cotterton Inferno for good measure. Pain able to answer just in time, but it looks like the real focus is going to be on this turtle. And Nomad, this is looking like um, an interesting situation because. This last, this last sanity popped here, not enough to take out Rebo. On the board, oh! season one with the kill lead, but Yuji, maximum charge from down under. Taking out Jay and Lusty. Lusty phone home. There's another kill by Yelly Hayes onto Jeff. That's three for none currently. And Kilowash not looking any better, worse for aware. Yelly Hayes gonna clean up house. Oh my god, that's a double for the Natalia and Rio gonna follow up. That's a wipeout.
for season one champions as i was just saying it looks like season three was actually leading in net but now a quick turnaround just like that crouching tiger hidden natalia is what yelly hayes is playing here almost unkillable six one and four just that one death it's not even an impactful death for him because he's way ahead of the curve here. Oh, wow. Yelly Hayes, 6, 1, and 4. He's like a meal on wheels, man. He's in and he's out. He's cleaning them out. And, wow, I don't think... Uh, who played the Natalia in the earlier game? Was that Jay? That was man, Jay. Yeah, Yelly Hayes is giving Jay a run for his money, man. Yeah, yeah. He's being fast and furious. He's just being fast and furious here with that Natalia, able to dive in and out, and with UG actually starting to become a threat here with the maximum charge. You could you could say he's a Filipino sniper. Oh yeah, that was a really good uh, initiate into the team fight. I think that maximum charge sniping someone out was the go signal for season one champs to go in uh, and. Uh, perform just an amazing counter initiate and a perfect turn but now look at this Rebo might have bitten off more than he can chew last insanity here by Jay cleaning up the grok turning him into rubble and this is going to be what seems like an impossible defense it's gonna be uh, a turret take here by season three uh that is a good conversion there by the season three champions taking down Rebo uh and then taking down the uh, mid lane turret they should have uh, turtle priority here, but the season one champs are already poised to try to contest that uh, Try to prevent that from happening as the turtles already down a quarter HP uh, Yelly Hayes in the back lines finally gets spotted out around the world in 40 days is not what Yelly Hayes is gonna be doing here He might he will not be able to escape the grasp of that falling star moon Good trade there for the turtle as well. I think the turtle got secured by the season three champions, Coco is gonna go down as well. Oh. Retaliations here for the rest of the season one champions. They're, they have to play it safe. A little messy. I think they were uh, having some trouble with their uh, target prioritization, and I don't blame them. I don't blame them. There's so many jumps, oh, no. so many catches on the season three, but oh, just like that, Payne says, "Hold up, hold up, hold up." Y'all are forgetting. I'm a gushin. Sword spike into a finish, popping the execute, gets a kill. It's some form of uh, redemption here for uh, season one, but really it's it's super short-lived here, Nomad, as they lose their bottom lane turret. Yeah, man, the thin red line here for the season one champions. It's going to be hard for them to bounce back uh, into this as the season three champions try to uh, mount a comeback. But as I say that, Yelly Hayes once again securing another kill, being a ninja assassin that he is. I was just gonna say, he is making it rain, my friend. He's making it rain. Look at that. 7, 2, and 4 on Yelly Hayes. And if we're talking about versatility, this man has jumped from support to tank to now an assassin. Well, you could argue that this Natalia plays a support role. But nonetheless, Bren Esports, Aether Main, Season 1 Champs, whatever you want to call them, they have gone around the map, around the roles, around the heroes, and in game... Two, we saw the rise of the support dad and now here we see the season one champions fielding the assassin haze mm -hmm. and will this be an outbreak of some sort for the season one champions to just completely tear down the tier two turrets lord, i think that may soon. be the case here especially if they secure the lord lord already up this is going to be uh rebo and yuji just making circles around this but huh impressive actually kilowash was still able to keep this tier one turret down bottom that's impressive yeah but this is yuji and rebo poised to take this down i don't think the, this tier one turret is gonna go down oh. uh gonna stay up any longer there but pain uh Kogo actually takes down uh, jeff cutie forever there mm -hmm. it's, a uh, he, it's a mirror 1v2 Still manages to survive that. There comes uh, Yelly Hayes looking for another assassination attempt. Let's see, it's gonna go down by the hands of Coco with the help of uh, Yelly Hayes. Yelly Hayes gonna go down here. Rio with that orange buff is lethal. But they'll take what they can. It's a two for one. Yelly Hayes for Jeff and Lusty. Still not a safe Lord take here. Rebo. Having Kilowash expend that Cyclone Eye. Still not an easy Lord take. Rio is popping off, I must say, 6-1-2. and two. He's a silent worker, but an efficient one nonetheless, Nomad. 32, especially 
that that season one can clinch the win, and that season three, it's it's all on the line now. So with that being said, um, I, I think in addition to their items, uh, they should watch out for rotations. And so far, I just noticed now season three, they're winning on the map. They are up one turret against season one, and this lord, it's gonna be the first this game. Wow. All right, I actually thought we were in one lord already. But this map is looking blue, Nomad. So season one, they're better poised at this position. Yeah, their pedigree is a hell of a lot better here. They might just push season the season three champions into rock bottom. Well, you know, we still have to take into consideration that Yelly Hayes uh, just running around the map and just sell, just yelling, you can't see me, all across the season three champions and looking for the assassinates. Oh, hold up. Big fight already breaking out. Still yet to commit. The spinner Rooney oh. is Jay. There it is. But a kill by Yuji onto Lusty might be the fatal mistake that leads into their downfall. And now the season one champs, they smell blood. They're going to go for it. There you go. Pain taking out Kilowash. That's going to be two for none so far, but Pain getting revenge is Rio taken out. Yuji still getting free hits. No, man, this is not a good look for the Season 3 champions as Jeff Yuri Forever might be next on the docket. Taken out just like that, and Jay is not in any form to fight back. Rio is going to go down here in any... Oh, wait, he takes down Pain. Uh, he takes down Rebo along the way. And that's it, the wipeout. A, little, a second too late as Lusty is going to respawn wow man that's the attitude of testament there for the season three champs yeah and they're forcing everybody here there's a the wipeout but that's another the third wipeout we might have a fourth wipeout here onto kilowash no nah, there's there's not enough damage onto coco and yelly hayes they're the only ones left but nonetheless they are going to choke out uh rio of his buff and this is going to be step one in uh, the uh, surgical dismantlement of what season three has built up they they were in the lead but that long drawn out fight that was the season one's advantage they were fighting in a small corridor wherein kimmy's uh attacks on yuji were just all the more efficient it, it led to this right so now we're just waiting for the lord take which will Steamroll people. It, it it it'll it'll give him uh, a better position to take this lord, and it might end in one final clash. Yeah, and Yuji's maximum charge is is actually feeling so much like a dive bomb here that you can almost feel it like it's it's 3D. And Yuji just being relatively safe there uh, because of Rebo just way in front of him, ready to go for the power of the nature and just deter anybody from coming in. I mean, who else is going to be the assassinating uh, factor here for Yuji to be taken out of the fight, right? It's just going to be Ryo uh, diving in. It's, except for Jay that has the oh. uh, last insanity that has been typically being forced to use the last insanity defensively. The fact that Pain has been doing okay, all right? Note, okay, not amazing, not phenomenal. Is amazing because it's so it's actually really hard for a Gushin to shine against a lineup that the Season 3 champions have brought out. But look at this now. Coco offering his body, life and limb, to be able to protect this Lord take that Yuji has just secured. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the first Lord of the game. And there you go, Jay spinning up, serving up the flames. And actually, that was just the first skill on Xborg. It looked like a last insanity. And I, I think they're saving that for a rainy day. Good on them. Lord being called down into bottom lane. It's enlightened. It's luminous. It's uh, the illumination of the Lord is what the Season 1 champions are going to try to protect here as they, uh, as they zone out the Season 3 champions from even trying to approach that. Uh, not really dishing out a lot of damage here. Uranus, uh, I mean, uh, Jawhead is not available there to help them out. But, but all things considered, this uh, Season 1 champion uh, lineup is effective as a four-man unit. What more? If Yelly Hayes joins them and Yelly Hayes just doing his job pushing out the top lane. Lord slowly pushing in. Coco just zoning everybody out away from the Lord. Mid lane turret is about to go down. Top lane oh. turret is being sieged up as well. Just the last instead used as a dish effort to defend this. All turrets are down. It's a matter of time here to season to one champion. Secure the Lord. There goes the snipe from the maximum charge. One already down here on the season three champions. No minion waves. 
available for them. Is this, is this going to be the final team fight? That is the question. Oh no. It looks like it is Last Insanity once more by Jay. Oh, bursting down Rebo in the front lines of Season 1 champions. Can they get a kill? Oh, oh, Jeff Fury goes down. There was one more that survived Jay off of the Immortality. It's Pop. There you go. Pain gets the kill. Oh, no. There's another Immortality here on the side of...